What's up, everybody? I have a special treat for you. I am here with the VP of Design and Hardware, Miss Ivy Ross, here with Google Ivy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. You're welcome. It's always fun. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> here, we are actually in a new location. This is inside the Google Store in Mountain View on campus. And from what the birds have been telling me, uh, this is your design. I worked with an architect, <laughs> but yes, it is definitely uh, comes from the vision of, since my team and I do the products, I was grateful to have the opportunity to do the home in which the products live because I do believe that we need to um, carry through our design uh, vision and theory so that people can experience it mm -hmm. in the context in which we have in mind. I've seen your design and that's why I'm so fascinated to come and talk to you because I can see some of these um, concepts that you've really said, hey, this is part of our identity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that sticks out to me is when Google said they're making a phone, people were like, wait, Google's making a phone, and the thing that I've noticed over the years is how very different the design language and kind of how you're approaching the look and feel of technology is compared to a lot of other companies, quite honestly, in the colors mm -hmm. and just the, you have to be different to stand out from the crowd, right? That's part of the point. For me, I have to love the category I'm in, but I have to be able to innovate, and I have to be able to, um, for me, it's about how we, how we work together as a team. So it's, it's the how and the what. Mm. And so I never like to do something twice, meaning this will probably be the only technology company <laughs> I ever work for. Because if you look at my history, I, I love taking myself and applying it to a new category and seeing if the same principles apply. So it's been terrific. Um, Google has been the first tech company, although I've always been a futurist and always been into innovation and technology where appropriate, even within toys. So um, yeah, and this has been great because technology <coughs> uses a lot of the things in terms of color, material, shape, form, function. Um, and then to be able to also get into creating space has been quite a gift. Well, you know, we have the new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro phones here. And I wanted to talk about them because we've seen this kind of design that you and your team have put together evolve really, I guess you would say, from the Pixel 6 line, yep. and, and it, it's shown an evolution. And so, you know, even just the colors, I think your color choices are have always been unique and different, and there's always one that kind of pops and stands out. Can you talk about how you and your team are thinking about color when applying this to these phones that, you know, over time a phone is a phone is a phone, but even the camera bar makes your, your design stand out differently, yep. and the colors do. Can you talk about you know, how you guys have yeah. approached that? Sure. Well, you said earlier, which is true, you know, there's an advantage to coming a little bit late to the game of hardware because you kind of get to stand back and go, OK, this brand does this, this brand does this, you know, with appreciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, they're this, they're this, what are we? Yeah. And um, for us, as a collective group of creatives, it was clear that there was no reason why things had to be hard edge and things had to be hard colors. And it's like, because that's not the way we believe, you know, I think that's the spirit in which technology started, but that doesn't necessarily mean now that it's part of our lives, it should stay that way. So there was this distinct effort to um, make everything as soft and comfortable. And, you know, color is very emotional. And so the idea that we have to, through the selection of colors each time, create something that um, is for everyone, meaning when we test our colors, we really look at making sure that two colors don't appeal to the same person. So dial them in to be really distinct, but also they come from witnessing sociological trends. Mm -hmm. You know, in fashion, you, you start looking at patterns and when society, is a little depressed, all of a sudden brighter colors come mm. into play. Like there's, there is a rhyme and reason to all of this. So for example, right now with Pixel 8, you know, the sky color, uh, bay we call it, but it really comes from looking at a clear sky mm. and blue sky. And you know, I think we're at a place where society, we need to have imagination and do mm. some blue skying concepts, <laughs> but also it is very, um, happy and uplifting yeah. as a color. And so we, we, when, we, when the team dives into these colors, they come from the why first, and then it's like, why do we feel people will be craving this color now? And then we really spend a lot of time dialing it in, you know, what is the shade? Mm -hmm. And then based on the material we're gonna be using, the surfaces, 
different colors look better on some surfaces than other. But even our light uh, skew porcelain, I love the way, you know, it's not that pure refrigerator white. Yeah, yeah. Um, it has an earthy warmth to yeah, it yeah. that's very sophisticated because I do think now we need to get grounded, you know, <laughs> and really understand more, yeah, get grounded to the earth. So making it a little, um, not pure, but a, a little earthy felt right. Man, I, so the bay blue is the color that everyone's talking about right now, yeah. right? That's getting a lot of buzz and really interesting how you talk about the psychology behind it because sometimes, you know, and you don't know, you, I guess you don't know if it's gonna hit when it's really gonna hit. Uh, another color that sticks out to me is this hazel color because when this came out, people were like, whoa, whoa, whoa what is this? It's gray, it's green, yeah. it's modern. <laughs> but I'll tell you right now, you might not know this, but Sonos recently came out with a speaker. They've always done black and white. Yeah. And they made a, literally, it's a hazel color. And it just reminds me of how, like, right, you, you push something new like this out into the ethos. Yeah. And then it resonates, you know, resonates with your team first. But, you know, when you start seeing other manufacturers kind of adopt it, then then it kind of like, oh, okay, Oh, yeah, right? no, we, it's very validating. Right, we, right. we, the designers, we all share. When that happens, it's like, check this out. Mm. But I remember with Hazel, it's interesting you bring that up because at first, you know, we present to um, our partners in the company and we kind of said, this green is going to be the new black. And they're like, no, nothing's <laughs> going to replace black. And we were saying, no, 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 there's a lot of reasons. I mean... This started when I think, if you think about it, we started to understand uh, and get more into um, what we were doing to the earth and more into sustainability. And so I said, no, there's, you know, there's gonna be a lot of attention on the natural world. And so the color green is gonna be much more familiar to us, much more comforting to us. And we specifically did something that we think will continue to be almost an, a neutral. You know, for people that don't want black I mean I love black and certainly we've done this really beautiful obsidian mm -hmm. color which is you know not quite black black yeah. but a little bit off yeah, like a and slate then, stone yeah slate totally stone. Um, slick but yeah. calm and sophisticated and then I love you know it's all about the play with the metal colors so each we look at each one as an individual and how do we amplify what you know the person that's going to want this you know, how do we dial that in versus the person that will want um, a porcelain phone or a bay blue phone, et cetera. But I'm glad to hear that you say you notice what's going on with Hazel because I think, who knows, it could progress to be the new black, but it's definitely a neutral now. I know people who don't want to go color, color uh, and don't want to do black mm -hmm. or porcelain um, find that super attractive. And, and because we carried it over, you know, usually we don't carry too many colors over but it's been such a hit yeah i, I mean you're starting to see it even in like ar architecture as well like this kind of shade yeah being used so yeah yeah yeah. no and then well because we were now this time matching the metal it gave us a particularly beautiful way to uh put hazel forward again so i'd love you know we're here in the store and I mean, I know you have so many <laughs> influences and things that you've been a part of. So I, I would love for you to just kind of maybe point out some of the kind of the curiosities here that you wanted to highlight. Um, I mean, we're walking up towards the Pixel tablet and this is, you know, people don't realize tablet. There has not been much innovation in tablet design for a long time. And you guys put the tablet on the speaker and everyone's like, Phew. so th this, this is a design that really stands out for me that you guys decided to shift how this is perceived personally love it and it because i think it is really innovative and we were it was during covid and the design team was thinking about wow how do we do more with less and also the fact that during covid we learned that things can be more than one thing right your kitchen table your dining room table could be your school room mm -hmm. and that um, we kind of sat around and talked about how things are moving to be more flexible and so then we looked at our you know, products and we had like Home Hub that we loved, but we were like, wait a minute, you know, this could detach and you could have it as a productivity tool or entertainment, like take it around the house, leave the speaker there and use it for all these other purposes and then come back and magnetically attract it. And we'd have like this really useful, flexible, unique product. And you know, I just love the way it took a lot of effort to figure out the design team, you know, just the right amount of 
you know, magnet to hold the tablet on, but to be able to grab it off with one hand. So these are all the little nuances that no one knows we spent months on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, and I love the, he you know, some of the headlines were, you know, this is so innovative, why didn't yeah. Apple do this? Yes, yes, right, um, right. And it just, it makes sense, yeah. you know, about, we really try and think about people in their lives, um, you know, what, where's the gaps? And so this was, um, one of those great products that I think fills the gaps. And it got us into this new arena that I think is super important. So between you know, the fold and tablet, yeah. now we've got some larger surfaces to play with that we're gonna keep innovating in. Yeah, as someone who pays attention to this industry, like when something sticks out like that, you, you, we pay attention, right? And we're like, oh, they're, they're doing something different. And it yeah. speaks to like how you guys and gals are thinking. Because even like something small like this, I remember when I visited you guys a while back, you talked about this stand, you know, I know this is up here, but it pulls off in, it, it looks like an, it was inspired by like a piece of jewelry or something. Is that, was that what, what, where that came from? Yeah, well, it, you know, what it does beautifully is it allows you to angle yeah. and you can, even when you put this, it's this shape because it locks into mm -hmm. the speaker. Yeah, it makes it easier to even like find it. It's yeah, so the idea was, again, thinking about how people are gonna use this, to have a case on your tablet and then to want to not have to take the case off to put it on the speaker. So all of those little um, details were thought about. Yeah. And this is done exceptionally well. People were crazy over the case. But you know, I, I pride myself on the team's uh, talent on being super thoughtful. It's like really spending the time and I mean that's what design is, it's yeah. like studying every detail even something that looks so simple yeah. there's so many ways you could go with it but it feels great when we create things that are beautiful simple and useful yeah. i mean that's what i love about being in in technology right um it's form and function at its peak <laughs> are there any other things on this kind of area that you wanted to highlight yeah, that so you like to talk about the, um where is here come to the watch Yeah, so very excited about the reception to the original Pixel Watch. And um, you know, I don't know when you were in the CMF room, did we do the water droplet experiment? Oh, talk about that, I love this, yeah, I love this concept. Yeah, because the, you know, first of all, there was no question that for all of us, the shape of time is round. Mm. So we were not gonna go any other way than the shape of time. <laughs> I mean, you think of the sun, a sundial, mm. everything's been round, there's a rich history there. Yes. Um, and it was also during COVID where the team was inspired by water because water as a natural element has these properties of resilience. It can become a liquid, a gas, it could freeze. Cause we were talking about like what um, elements, you know, cause I think nature has a lot to teach us. Can we look at for um, lessons in how to deal with this new situation the world is in? And so the designers started playing with everything about water and even started doing these experiments of dropping water on a steel plate, different steel plate shapes to see, you know, there's a moment when that edge breaks, yeah. but the natural um, radius of a water droplet is so perfect. And so that really, in, in the Milan design show, we literally had someone dropping water next to one of our watch pucks and they could not believe it. I mean, they thought that the water, when you don't drop it, they thought the water was the puck. Mm. So that was really fun. But anyway, you know, we continue to want to stick with this iconic yeah. design, um, just making a little bit of improvements in terms of the 100% recycled aluminum um, and a little bit of improvements on the crown. But see, that's amazing. Like no one would, people that observe this, they won't think that, but it's a subconscious thing where they've maybe seen or they, their mind subconsciously knows it kind of, it's like water, but they don't outright say, hey, that's a, that's a, water, that's a water on a plate, right? Right, right, right. But it, it is that, that natural, that currently existing in what we see in the world today that this is inspired. Yeah, from. so it feels comfortable. Yes. I mean, I do believe, um, and you know, I always say, my, the team knows, I always say it's not either or, it's both and. Yeah, yeah. It's like even in here, it's, it's, we juxtapose the technology with the natural warm wood. It's not either or, it's both and. Yeah. You know, in terms of even analog and digital, I think 
they're both necessary because yeah. it's tension of opposites. But um, yes, you're right. It's unconscious that people feel uh, comfortable with it. Yeah. And curves um, make us feel more comfortable than angles in general. That's, that's awesome. Um, we, I wanted to take you over here because this is obviously kind of like the rich history of the Pixel phone from the original, which I own. I have a Pixel 2. I skipped a three, I bought a four or five, I have a six and seven. So when you see this lineup um, and you've seen the evolution, like what, what do you think about? So it's, it's exciting. It's like watching someone grow up a person and finding itself. Um, you know, we knew immediately out of the gate that because other brands tended to be one slick surface, part of the idea um, after we kind of came up with, you know, human, optimistic, and daring as our principles was, you know, to make things more human, um, having more than one slick surface so that you can feel. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're, we're not just about how things look. We've always been about how things feel as well. And so we really started exploring this idea of do we just change within one surface two different textures, as you see in, in, in 16, 17, 18. And then it was, you know, as more cameras came into play, I mean, this is what I love about design, is about solving problems, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a new problem on your hand, more cameras, and then we realized the future was going to continue. Our, um, uh, you know, camera technology was going to grow. So it's like, oh boy, we better do a design where that is a given and so how do we start to work with that and that's where almost in 19 and 20 this you know it's almost like a pixel yeah, yeah, this shape yeah, yeah. and it's like okay let's you know keep it simple um and play with the great surfaces and make it very graphic with the black band picking up and then as we evolved and again i love when a challenge becomes a design positive it's like okay too many cameras, it's going to break the square. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we understood that, um, that's why I say you know who you're going to be when you grow up, that the camera was going to be a major, continuing to be a major innovation for Pixel. So we've got to do something that gives us some flexibility. And so we came up with the horizontal bar idea, which no one, you know, as you know, everyone plays with the camera array in yeah. different arrangements. But it was like, yes, you know, yeah. when you see it, that was it, because the designers did a number of ideas, and we were all immediately attracted toward that is a great solution, and that horizontal bar becomes an icon. Yeah. Like I even see um, people in masses, you know, even at concerts, you could see that horizontal bar. It's like, yes. <laughs> so we knew that that works for us and was going to become this iconic um, symbol. And then the idea is we just keep progressing to refine it, make it even more premium. And so I really feel like starting in 21, it's like, it's like almost a baby that becomes an adolescent and then becomes a grown up. It's like you, you, f you see it and you feel like this is it and we're gonna rock with this for a while um, because it has the flexibility, it gives us surfaces to expand, um, to play with, to play with the color and texture between uh, the back material and the camera bar. So it's really, I love that we have this here. Yeah. Um, and God, we have to get you a three to complete your collection. Hey, I'm, right? not, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining <laughs> about that at all. Not, not at all. Um, quick thing, I know since I'm talking to you, I'm not saying that I, I, I like color requests. Oh, and you okay. You guys can, you know, but purple, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about purple. Maybe I saw there's some purple indications at the um, Google store in New York and Chelsea in their, uh, in their buds, bud section. So mm. I, I saw a couple hues there, and I don't know if you've been playing with them in the lab, but I, hey. I can neither confirm okay. or deny, okay. Okay. but all I can say is stay tuned. Okay, sounds great. <laughs> all right, so we have the Pixel here through the Pixel 7. I, I did want to talk about more color. I mean, I know I talked about purple, but the rose one here, I thought this was a fascinating color because it's like, Creamy, it can be feminine, it can also be masculine. I, this is a fascinating color. Um, can you talk about rose? I mean, I even have it on my shirt right now. Yeah, so. it's a perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, we were trying to find, almost to me, it's uh, uh, the lighter version of what Hazel did, which mm -hmm. is a neutral. You know, it's a no color color. <laughs> it's got that p a little bit of pink, a little bit of orange. And I love the combination with the yeah. metal color, 
which is a little more intense. Uh, so it's that combination. But it re was really meant to do something that was soft. Um, again, nod to nature. Look at your yeah. shirt, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, the flowers in nature. Yeah, yeah. But that for someone that didn't want color, color, bright color, um, like bay, but really wanted to differentiate and not have uh, a dark or a light. So, you know, and we feel like it's soft and calming. It's, this, to me, is a very calming color. What do you think is, I know you can't tell us the colors, but what do you think the next direction for your color theory or psychology is? Is it staying along the course, or are you, are you trying to shift in new ways? Because you always throw out kind of like a bold one. The bay blue was kind of that zinger, you know, that no one expected, and that's the one everyone's talking about. So, um, Yeah, no, we love when that happens. Yeah. Um, we have right now, in testing more colors than we need. You know, all of them we um, would be, design would be happy with. Uh, but it's not just, we don't look at, it's interesting, the individual color, but also how it looks as a family. Mm -hmm. Because we always want to make sure we have, you know, a dark, a light, and then a pal, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we want to make sure we appeal to different people, like not giving the same kind of person. In some cases, you may give the same kind of person two choices, yeah. but make sure we have our bases covered. So it's kind of this matrix, mm. but we set up um, different color families that we could see. But we're, you know, we're tracking society, and so some things usually continue. Like I think we're still going to be wanting happiness, mm. and we're still mm. going to be needing some calm, but we'll always throw that um, zinger in there. And uh, that I am not going to share with you. You'll just have to wait. Okay. So uh, Pixel 9, Pixel 9 Pro, that's what I'll have to wait for. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ivy. Appreciate your time. Thank you You're so welcome. much. You're welcome. All right. It was fun.